Hi there. Today we're going to read a story called On the Trap Line. Before I look at that though, I want to tell you why I found this story. I initially listened to a memoir by David A. Robertson on CBC Podcasts. And then I read this memoir that was based on that by David as well. Um, so fantastic. It's about him connecting with his heritage. He's Swampy Cree. Uh, and um, with his father as well. Um, and from that, we come to the story for today on the trap line. It's by David A. Robertson and Julie Flett. And you know that I like to explore the whole book first. So beautiful illustrations, uh, natural colors. I really like the colors Julie chooses. Um, and it talks a little bit on the back about the story. Um, and you notice right away that there's Cree in the story, which I really love. And um, Kiweo means he goes home. And that's the name of the podcast that I initially listened to. I am going to be really careful with my pronunciations and try my best. Because in the back here, let me see if I can find it for you. Where is it? There it is. It has swampy Cree words that are in the story. Um, so I will read those to you. I'll also post um, when I find some links to um, Cree language readers reading this, which would be fantastic to listen to as well. Also in the back, there's a note from Julie about her heritage and her connections to this. And also by David, which is so cool to read and learn more about the author. I know that if you want to dive deeper and maybe do some research bouncing off from this, it's just a picture book, but it's so rich. You could find lots more information about David and Julie and explore um, the stories that they're telling within this because there are kind of a few different themes. All right, so let's get started reading. As always, I have my little bookmark in here and that's going to be our reminder that you can pause there and then you just get a tidbit of the story and you can move on and get it on your own and read it on your own if that's really something cool that you want to do. Um, or you can stay with me and read the whole story together. Uh, it's your choice. So I'll have that little reminder in there. Okay, on the trap line. I'm on my way up north because Musham, my grandpa, is taking me to his trap line. I've never been there before, and Musham says he hasn't been since he was a kid like me. When I look out the window, all I can see are trees and water. The lakes look like blue clouds in a green sky. What's a trap line, I ask? Trap lines are where people hunt animals and live off the land, he says. Oh, there's my reminder. It's pretty early. I'll read this. And then you can choose to pause. And go find the book. Maybe at your library or borrow it from a friend. Um, and read it on your own. Or you can get it and then come back and read it with this video. When we touch down in the community, Musham's old friend is waiting for us. Tansy, he says to Musham. Tansy, Musham says to him. Musham speaks Swampy Cree when he's around friends. Hi, I say. That's what Tansy means in English. It's different here. In the city, everything's bunched up. In the north, 
there's so much space. Musham says relatives live in houses close to each other. But to me, it looks like there's still lots of room between them. Kiwetanak means north. We pull up to a small house beside a big lake. Is this your trap line, I ask? No, Musham says. This is where we lived after we left the trap line. Musham tells me that in the winter, everybody in the family slept in one room where the wood stove kept them warm. He says it was nice being together like that. I guess some things are bunched up in the north. Wakomak anak means family. We walk to the shore behind the house. There are all kinds of rocks, big and small, round and flat. I think about the beach I go to near the city where there's only sand. This is where we used to swim, Mosham says. Mosham tells me that he and his brothers and sisters made paper boats here too. They would pretend the boats were freighters and put tiny rocks in them to see how long they would float. Capasimo means swim. We drive down a gravel road that winds through trees like a snake. At the end of the road, a path leads to the remains of an old building. This is where I went to school after we left the trap line, Musham says. Most of the kids only spoke Cree, but at the school, all of us had to talk and learn in English. Did you still get to speak Cree, I ask? My friends and I snuck into the bush so we could speak our language, he says. In, in, e, moin means Cree language. We look at the birch trees and pine trees and all the long grass. I imagine Musham and his friends speaking Cree in there. Is that your trap line, I ask? No, he says, my trap line is far from here. I ask Musham what it is like going to school after living on the trap line. He's quiet for a long time. I learned in both places, he says. I just learned different things. Pakan means different. There's a river at the end of the highway. We get into one of the motorboats docked along the shore and head out onto the water. The river is wide, but Musham's smile is even wider. Musham tells me his family's boat only had a one horsepower putt-putt engine. That's not a lot of horses, I say, but I think it would be nice to travel slow around here. Baycatch means slowly, and Minwasan means beautiful. I see all kinds of things, beaver dams, eagles flying overhead, and paintings on rocks. I see the sun climb higher and shadows get shorter. I see blue water turn to black. That's when Musham's eyes light up. He points to a boulder by some thick trees. That's my trap line. Kiweo, he goes home. Musham needs a walking stick, so I find him a perfect piece of driftwood. This is where we lived when we were on the trap line, he says. Musham tells me that everybody in the family slept in one big tent so they could keep warm at night. I think it would have been nice being together like that. Pakwanikamik means tent.
you find a pile of wood that looks like a giant game of pickup sticks. This is where we chopped wood, he says. Mushum tells me that even the youngest children had jobs to do, and everyone would share the work. I think about my chores back in the city, putting away dishes, cleaning up my room. I wonder what it would be like to do my chores outside instead. Wanawi means go outside. There are bushes all around the clearing. We find one that's full of Saskatoon berries. Mushum picks one and puts it right in his mouth. When we were hungry, we had to find food, he says. We ate all kinds of berries. I pick a Saskatoon berry and eat it just like Mushum. It tastes better than the fruit we get at the store. I have more than just one. Minessa means berries. We walk together back to the shore. Mushum tells me that this is one of the places where he used to set traps. He caught all kinds of animals, but mostly rats. You mean like the ones that live in sewers, I ask? I've seen that kind of rat on television. No, he laughs. Muskrats. Mushum tells me they ate the muskrat meat. The pelts were sold to buy flour, tea, sugar, and lard. Things you couldn't get on the trap line. Pisiskawak means animals. When we're about to leave, I stand with Mosham by the lake. He holds on to my hand tight, but he doesn't say anything. Kiss, kiss, Sue. He remembers. We stop to fish on the way back. Musham's friend catches lots of fish. Musham catches some. I almost catch one, but it gets away. Why are you so good at fishing, I ask. We used to fish on the trap line too, he says. Musham tells me that we can share. On the trap line, everybody shared with everybody else. Natana Makewin means sharing. That night, the community has a feast. There's bannock, mixed vegetables, berries, wild meat, and all the fish we caught. It makes my stomach rumble. Musham is an elder. After he blesses the food, it's my job to serve him his meal. Elders get to eat before everybody else. E kozani, he says when I bring his food. E kozani means thank you. When it's time to go home to the city, I ask Musham if we can come back soon. He says that we can. After we take off, I see Musham looking out the window. Can you see your trap line, I ask? Yes, he says. I can imagine it just the way it used to be and just the way it is. Can you? Wapatam means he sees it. I close my eyes and picture the trap line, the trees, the water, and all the land and little islands, chopping wood and picking berries, catching rats at the shore, but not that kind of rat, sleeping in a tent with family to stay warm, standing by the lake with Musham. I open my eyes. Yes, I say, I can see it too. And there are the notes. That's the end of the story. I just love the flow of this story. I hope you do too.